Hey guys, my name is Mike Hermes, and today we're going to talk about why lighting is so important for 3D animators. Intro. Well, it's uh, been a while since I recorded new videos. I've been traveling for the last uh, month or so. Uh, first in uh, Germany, where I visited Animago and had the opportunity to speak there. That was really cool. Check it out right here. And then in the US. Now, uh, while I was at Animago, I met some really cool people from uh, Rise VFX Studios. They've been working on the latest Pirates of the Caribbean uh, video. They hooked me up with this really cool t-shirt. So uh, shout out to you guys, you do some awesome work, okay? All right, so let's jump into today's video. Uh, why is lighting so important for 3D animators? Well, let's uh, jump in and I'll uh, tell you, here we go. All right guys, let there be light. Okay, well that saying is there for a reason. Light is very important, especially for a 3D animator, okay? Now I deal with uh, students on a daily basis and uh, what I see is that light is something uh, that as far as skill set is concerned is usually developed at a very late stage. People are really skilled at modeling, rigging, texturing, and so forth. And when it comes to lighting, they kind of miss out on that, okay? So that's why I'm doing this video as part of the uh, Light Camera Action series to show you how important this is. All right, uh, picture number one, story is king. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, whether you are a traditional animator working with a pen or pencil, or you are a 3D animator, uh, digital um, or otherwise, and you want to tell a story, then that is why you're doing the whole thing. Story is king, okay? Now, why am I saying that? Because light adds a lot to how you tell your story. I did this on a black background on purpose to show you that without light, there is nothing. There's no story to tell. That's how important light is, okay? So let's add some light here. Now, once we do that, you automatically see something showing up, right? This little character is standing there. And while light is added, first of all, you can see that he's standing there. And second, you can see a shadow cast on the floor behind him. So um, this shadow is on the floor. It's fairly long. And this gives you some information about where this scene is. Now, most likely it is uh, outside, it looks like. Uh, because the light seems to be quite high up and even if you uh, you know are not aware it still tells you a, a story it's even better when you're not aware actually okay so you can play with the direction of your light to simulate a lot of things let's say somebody is watching TV then the light would probably come from that TV uh, if someone's outside it would probably be you know coming from above um, one thing I see in uh, real life movies all the time, and I think that is absolutely horrible, is I see somebody walking outside on the sidewalk and I see two or three shadows from that same person. Basically, that's a dead giveaway that external lighting has been set up outside and besides the shadow cast by the sun, you also have additional shadows cast by the light set outside. So be very, very aware of that, okay? So that's direction, so what else? Okay, the angle of your light will tell a lot as well. When shadows become long, it's later in the day and so forth, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, indoor, same deal. The angle of the light will tell a lot about your story. Is the, the, uh, the character or you know, the actors, if you will, in your scene, are they happy, are they sad, are they angry, uh, and so forth. Uh, light plays a big, big role in trying to express emotions, which is a very important part of telling your story, okay? So what's next? The intensity, pretty obvious. Do you want your scene to be very dark or very bright? Same deal. Um, you know, it tells a lot about time of day. It tells a lot about whether you're indoor or outdoor. And again, it tells you about the mood of the scene. Right, color, very, very, very important. Now, nowadays, a lot of people in post-production will do uh, color grading, but uh, I feel it's always cool to do that straight in your uh, scene, in your setup, if you can. And this has a huge effect, once again, on the story you're telling. 
uh, for example, uh, science fiction scenes, typically grayish, bluish, kind of cold and, uh, you know, kind of robotic even maybe, right? Romantic scenes, uh, typically more yellow or red, warmer tones, warmer colors, and uh, color, um, you know, plays a very important part in that. Alrighty, so what else have we got? Well, when we talk about this color, we talk about uh, typically color expressed in Kelvin. Now, um, this is used in photography and film a lot, and this is a handy chart to work with. So for example, if you are uh, working with a daylight scene, you would typically want your light uh, intensity to be somewhere between 5500 and 6500, okay? That would be a daylight scene, and you get the corresponding color. As the day becomes later, your color will change. It will become more uh, red, uh, orange, and so forth uh, in a range of, let's say, two to 3,000. What if you are lighting your scene with a match or with a candle and so forth, okay? So I'm quite sure this chart will come in handy and uh, please, please, please use that, okay? All right. Now, um, famous painting here, Rembrandt. Um, besides the intensity, direction, and everything else, um, lighting can be used as almost a pointing tool. If you want to have a strong emphasis in your scene, even if it's a still render, um, you can use light to your advantage to kind of uh, point the audience in a certain direction where they should look first, right? Now, if you look at this painting, you see that the characters in the middle, they are uh, lit the brightest. And then immediately after that, you have the uh, lady uh, somewhat to the left and then the group over on the right, okay? Now, this is a technique used all the time. And actually, there's a thing called Rembrandt lighting, which is kind of a concept. And I advise you to Google that. That will be very helpful for you, all right? Okay. Then, finally, practicals. Um, I already mentioned that in real life, uh, you will have situations where you will get light from objects, let's say from a TV set or whatnot. Now, if you are animating a scene, then you will have to come up with additional lighting to create that same effect. So for example, the people here that are watching this TV, they have this blue glow on their hair and in their face, uh, supposedly coming from this TV set. Now, because this is a real image, uh, it's probably likely that it's actually the case, but if you are doing this in an animated scene or in a still render, you will have to um, set up your lighting in a way that you get the same effect. So you will uh, have to have that light come from that direction with the correct intensity, the correct color, and so forth. So this basically already brings a lot of elements together that we just discussed, right? So, Hopefully this information helps you to understand why lighting is so, so, so important for a 3D animator, because after all, story is king and that is what it's all about, okay? So uh, please let me know uh, below if you have any questions about this. This is something that you can go on and on about because it's very, very important. Uh, leave questions below if you have any. And that said, thank you guys for watching. There are gonna be more videos in the uh, Light Camera Action series. And that said, see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.